In this section, we'll go from the UN counterattack in 1950 all the way until the Korean War ended in 1953. MacArthur, now commander of the UN forces, devised a, a devious plan, an amphibious assault at Incheon on South Korea's western coast. The tides varied greatly there, and an ill-timed ill invasion risked bogging down with the low tides. This, MacArthur figured, meant that the North Koreans wouldn't be, expect them to attack there. And so on September 15, 1950, MacArthur's UN forces landed at Incheon, cutting the North Korean supply lines and quickly driving uh, them northward. The Incheon invasion involved almost 300 naval vessels and approximately 75,000 UN troops. The code name for the invasion was Operation Chromite. MacArthur's UN troops quickly recaptured Seoul and briefly halted at the 38th parallel, the division between southern and northern Korea, until the General Assembly of the United Nations on October 7, 1950, authorized MacArthur and the UN forces to take all the necessary steps to establish UN control throughout the entire Korean peninsula. Although the Chinese foreign minister informed uh, the Indian ambassador in Peking that if the U.S. or U.N. forces crossed the 38th parallel, China would send troops to the Korean frontier to defend North Korea. Few took this threat seriously. MacArthur assured Truman that there was little danger of Chinese intervention, and he pr promised publicly a great slaughter if Chinese armies entered the fight. He was very bellicose in his comments. On October 15, 1950, Truman met MacArthur on Wake Island in the Pacific. Truman was concerned that MacArthur's aggressive and bellicose strategies and rhetoric would uh, entice the Soviets or the Chinese to invade to help the North Koreans. You know, Truman believed that he needed to defend Korea, but he worried that MacArthur was, would cause World War III. Truman warned MacArthur not to attack the Chinese while MacArthur quietly complained that politicians were trying to tie the hands of the general. Clearly, MacArthur and Truman didn't get along, and Truman later wrote that MacArthur kept him waiting on the Wake Island Airport tarmac just to embarrass him before the press. MacArthur's troops advanced beyond the 38th parallel and moved very quickly. By the end of October, they were approaching the Yalu River, which of course was the border between the uh, Communist China and uh, North Korea. MacArthur, as he got close to the Yalu River, began to encounter some Chinese troops, advanced units that appeared to be operating in a defensive matter, a manner. The Chinese were complaining to the UN and demanding that the UN troops withdraw out of North Korea. MacArthur seemed to ignore the fact that the Chinese had massed hundreds of thousands of additional troops right beyond the uh, Yalu River, and he ordered an attack on the Chinese. In ordering the attack, MacArthur clearly violated the spirit, if not you know, the letter of his instructions from Truman, and it, it actually proved a blunder as the Chinese in November 1950 counterattacked in mass. The massive Chinese army pushed the UN troops further southward and retook Seoul. The uh, UN regrouped and uh, was able to re retake Seoul, and then the fighting by early 1951 settled down not far from the original lines of uh, the 38th parallel. And uh, Truman began to look for a, a diplomatic solution. MacArthur, meanwhile, was worried about all of Korea, all of Asia, rather, going communist, and he wanted to uh, bomb the Chinese and and. Uh, Truman was worried about a third world war, and Truman was uh, figuring that, well, we can defend South Korea, but we th this will be a limited uh, in a war, and we don't want a World War III. And this really angered MacArthur. Of course, MacArthur was uh, a general, and, and he had to follow orders of the president, uh, who was commander-in-chief. As Truman began settling in to try to find a diplomatic solution, MacArthur was uh, upset and he issued a, a public statement calculated to prevent a peaceful settlement. And then in a reply to a letter from House Minority Leader Joseph Martin, Jr. of Massachusetts, the, the, MacArthur called for a war to defeat communism in the Far East. We must win, he concluded. There's no substitute for victory. 
Martin read his letter to the House of Representatives on April 5th, 1951, and uh, the Republicans picked up on it, and by April 10th, Truman and all the publicity, uh, Truman ended up relieving MacArthur of his command in Japan and Korea. MacArthur then returned to a ticker day parade in New York City. Throughout 1951, all the way to 1953, negotiations took place in Panmunjom, a, a town near the 38th parallel. The talks were continuing in 1952 when Truman was leaving office. Republic, Republican presidential candidate Dwight Eisenhower promised to go to Korea, implicit, implicitly promising to bring the negotiations to a successful conclusion. In July 1953, just after Eisenhower took office, negotiations reached an armistice. It was clear that the North Koreans realized that they were not going to get the entire peninsula, and, McCar and Eisenhower and his Secretary of State John Foster Dulles were talking about massive buildup of nuclear weapons, and you know, it, so it, it, a peace made sense, or at least an armistice made sense. The armistice was an agreement to stop fighting, and, and it created a two and a half mile wide demilitarized zone along the lines, and it also provided for the exchange of prisoners. It was not, however, a peace treaty resolving the problems that caused the fighting in the first place. Technically, a state of war continues to exist between the People's Republic of Korea and the Republic of Korea today. American troops remain today stationed along the DMZ, and over the last half century, uh, you know, there have been uh, a number of in incursions and some brief hostility in fighting. Many only know of the Korean War from the wildly popular television show MASH in, in the 1970s and 1980s, which starred the actor Alan Alda. In fact, the TV series about medical personnel near their front lines, a Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, or the acronym MASH, was based on a popular movie in the early 1970s by the same name, which starred Donald Sutherland and Elliot Gould. The movie, in turn, was based on a book entitled M.A.S.H. by an actual surgeon in the Korean War. It was a uh, black anti-war comedy. This includes the section uh, from the American counterattack and the U.N. counterattack in 1950 until the end of the war in 1953.